Nami most likely is... Well, it is going no. to go towards the side of AL this time. Switching things up a little bit. Just expanding the champion pool. Letting Elk get some more experience on the Zeri, which does have a 0% win rate. So I'm really surprised that they decided to opt into this side of the duo when Lucian Nami was obviously available. Uh, when you're versing a lower tier and... Uh, team i think experimenting like this is good because you want to expand that champion pool and just get experience on it but sejuani they're pretty much just swapping team comps this time around but like i said xiaohe on these scaling champions like the sejuani and the uh Malkai, I think he is such a inconsistent player when it does come to those early games where him locking in Malkai is very dangerous because he often uh, opt uh, he often goes into these bad fights and he doesn't really get to the point where he's able to do a lot of damage on Malkai. But of course, the top lane bans are going to come out where Bin has been looking extremely consistent. Even on the Nara, he was causing a lot of damage in the previous game where he was pretty much soloing Betty on that AD carry. Yeah, it did feel like he was just having the way of a, the the game of a of a pretty you know it's like smurfing on the on like golds and plats and stuff <laughs> like that. I imagine it's just kind of like I don't really care what happens in this early stages. I am just better. That's just kind of how it is. But now we come back into this one here. It's interesting to see as well with the Shizwani banned away. Oh, sorry, picked by BLG. They're banning away the Renekton. We do normally see the Renekton kind of used by the team that has the Sejuani as a, what was it, a, as more of a kind of an instant almost proc of your E or your W for the Sejuani, but not going to be given over, not going to be taken either side by BLG as uh, AL now start to focus out towards Bin's champion pool. Didn't go for the Fiora last game, but could definitely go towards this if, uh, if AL allowed it to go through. So now we might see... I was going to say a Camille band away here because they do not want to give those big melee top laners mm. over with a Sejuani in the jungle. Yeah, Sejuani just looking for them synergies in that top side for the side of BLG this time around. But with the Kassadin being taken off for BLG, I'm expecting a Rise, which does get locked in for Yagal, where he is able to just scale safely into the game. Which, once again, they are completely flipping the team comps for this game too. And this is just BLG saying, we can do it, but better than you guys. Anything we can do, anything you can do, we can do better. And on, uh. on a, this, is a, this is a flip. This is a flip. This is a straight flip right now. I, I would need to see a Nar. I don't expect to see a blind Nar coming in here, but I would love this. Go for a Nar and let the other team go for Cassante. This would just be maximum disrespect if BLG did that. Yep, I'm expecting a Nar and Cassante matchup in that top lane again. I mean, Sion is still on the tables, and we have been seeing a lot of success when it does come to this top lane matchup, which is getting hovered by AL. I believe it has a nine or oh, ten to one win ratio in the LPL. So this is a very Giga Chad blind from the side of BLG, but Bin isn't going to opt into the Cassante pick because we know that San does do a little bit better when it comes to the 1v1. And uh, what does Bin have in his little champion pool? Because he is very experimental when it comes to the variety of champions he has. I love that his little champion pool. Uh, plays big champion everything. pool. I'm yeah, so I sorry. Say, I, 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 I saw just, not, I, and I'm like little. Mm, yeah. I was gonna say you you, you saw a Yordle and you just went aw. <laughs> He's so small. <laughs> well, but yeah, look. Yeah, gonna be the Nar. <laughs> yep, this time around we have a huge switch up in at least the top lane matchup. San gets introduced into this game too, and uh, a lot of force from the side of AL with the Malkai all available, of course, paired with the Scion. The team fights are gonna be a lot more easier to execute, and of course, Jace going to be in the hands of Pinzi this time around. I think Jace, when you're up against a Rise, he does uh, naturally get lane priority, so it's gonna be a lot easier for Xiaohao to make these early plays around the map, especially also having the Lucian. And Nami in your pockets, and, <laughs> and we're gonna beat you with it. Yeah, I mean, this time uh, Elk is on the Zeri, and we need to remind our fellow friends and family back at home that the entire reason game one went so terribly for the side of AL is because Betty on the Zeri made a little bit of a mistake in the laning phase where he was just getting killed over and over, where the Lucian got out of control. So now that Elk is piloting this Zeri champion. He, you know, it really depends on how he plays the early game and if he is going to get caught out and make the same mistakes because I think AL needs to play towards that. Absolutely. I do like the way we see the supports going back because they uh, picked up 60 golds between the two of them, uh, getting some nice frosts. Uh, 
some spell thieves. Sorry, I was gonna say frost fang, and I was like, I think that's gone. Uh, I don't think that's a old. thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I am old. I am old. I I remember when Deathfire Grass was in the game. Oh, that's how old no. I am. <laughs> okay, well, it's like I was also a Deathfire Grass enjoyer, but this time around in this bottom two v two, I have spotted a rune different oh, a different rune coming out of the Yumi. I believe Sword Art went Guardian last game, but this time. Or on has decided to go with the airy, so they're just giga chatting it up in this bottom 2v2. Yeah, they really, really are just trying to just put down the pressure right now. I will say, yes, the Lushinami is exceptionally powerful, but we did see it in game number one. The Zeri and the Yumi just, just have a better time at level one, you know, kind of the stages. You don't really gain that power for the Lushinami until you get that full palette of, you know, Q, W, and E, even obviously the R as well, but this is kind of an added bonus. We will see. Bit of a trade into the mid lane as you go, just kind of putting wow. pin Z. Wow, that's a that's a hell of a trade there coming out from a rise and only one rotation of spells. Yeah, that was a beautiful trade from Yaga. Traditionally, the J should be winning the lane, but I guess just giving the rise to someone like Yaga, where he was the mid laner of JDG for four years, he is going to happily take this 1v1 duel and take those trades where pin Z gets chunked out. But this time around, the Maokai does comfortably uh, scale. Uh, well, he is comfortably taking his camps around the map. Uh, but I do want to see Shun going for those invades at that red buff because you have the red buff available when it comes to those 1v1s. Yeah, well, bit of an all in now in the mid lane as. Uh... Yeah, just trying to put down the hurt early onto this Jace. Does have a little bit of priority with the wave clear for the moment until Jace gets a couple of levels. But there we go. You can see 12 wins to 19 in the all time in the LPL 2023 summer split. And the. Uh, this uh, oh, sorry, summer spring split. It's too much. It's, it's just too. I'm going between too many different things right now. It's messing it's my okay, brain up. It's okay, Sheen. <laughs> we loved you on the LEC, and you know, just kick back and relax and enjoy this AL versus BLG match because you're we too, see you're, Shun you're going in for that second red buff from the side of Xiao Hao. So the Malkai once again getting bullied out of his own jungle camps, where Xiao Hao knew this, and he was just trying to look for uh, a play on the other side of the map, but of course it didn't work out too well. So. Once again, the Sejuani is going to hit 6 very, very early compared to the Maokai, where he is one camp behind now. But how is he going to utilize this power uh, level 6 spike when it comes to these early game picks? Wait to see. Sean will get his first blue buff, so good for him. Uh, changing up how the first game went. I will say, you got to see an early back coming out for the side of BLG. They went back a couple of calls. So, recognizing that this lane isn't going to be a, uh, a kill fest for the moment, just kind of recognizing they could get a little bit of an advantage should uh, all things go the way they think they will. Been taking a trade against CDZ. And again, going to be wet noodles in this top side PVE for the longest of times. They are. Just not really in a position to try and fight each other. But Betty starting to get rolling a little bit now on this Lucian. Starting to feel a bit more comfortable. Like I said, once he gets those three uh, points, once he gets those three levels, having access to his full kit makes him much more deadly. But speaking of deadly, got to be very careful. I don't really expect you to go for a fight here. As I say that, you do get the, the heal, heal coming out from Sword Art. They get the burn. But yeah, I was going to say, you don't really have any... Oh, I was going to say CC, but you cannot walk forward there. Shun burning the flash. Oh, Betty, that's pretty big. Shun out here saying, I got one more in me. He goes in for the Q and burns Betty's flash. But like you said, Elk getting this call early on into the game, ultra disrespect into a Lucian Nami lane where they have so much kill there into you in these early levels. But, you know, having Betty not having that flash available once again, uh, I believe Shun is just going to consistently look towards his bot side because this top lane, snooze fest. But the Siren does have a uh, Comet for this second game, and that does help in terms of trading when it comes to the range of us melee matchup. Nicely done there by Shun to kind of re-put pressure on. This is a thing as well, like you're missing summoners there on this bot side. It's a difficult thing to really make work for you as we see the Yumi trashing on. So after getting a couple more gold to make sure she can get her uh, fairy charm alongside that amplifying tone. So nice little recall there for the Yumi and the Zeri, but Again, there's more and more pressure coming out here on top of AL. They need to try and find a little bit of an avenue. I will say that we'll be hitting level sixes very soon onto the likes of ZDZ and PinZ. So curious to see if they can make a move. But BLG, they're already kind of ahead of the play right now. And they're already on the dragon. 
Yeah, but looking at the item slots, we have the Noon Quiver available for Betty and Zeri only sitting on a Longsword and Cole, so just the pure damage difference when it does end up in a 4v4 in this bottom side. It's not looking too hard for BLG, however, they do secure the first dragon when it is the Zeri Yumi. Uh, getting the lane priority and the first dragon goes towards the scaling composition so that's pretty worrying because you want to have things happening for the side of al we we'll wait to see where anything kind of goes right now AL uh, will be as you say we always talk about it we can say it we'll say it a million times more we've said it a million times before Gale Force, Imperial Mandate. That is the spike we're looking at right now. And even Preach. alongside something like uh, the Jace, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's a pretty st bog standard one. We are waiting for the meta to kind of change over here in the LPL once we get onto the new patch, hopefully soon. Uh, but it is going to be about that kind of setup right now. We are just waiting for that to really happen. No one's really in a position to make something work at the moment. But I say that, Sean, thinking about trying to see if you go for something here. It's not level six. I really do feel, especially if you're trying to make bot lane work without a melee all-in support, you are going to have to try and just get your ultimate to really set that one up for you and your team. Yeah, and Betty does have the cleanse available, so the first gank won't work unless you do come and re-gank as the Sejuani. He is going to just focus on clearing his camps and get that level six spike where he is able to force these plays a lot easier as the piggy of this game. But of course, Xiaohao not having his early red buff available to him, he is a little bit more behind compared to Sejuani, so if Shun is smart enough about this and he tries to force an angle in the mid 2v2 while Malphite isn't 6 yet, I lie. Malphite hit 6 first. Well, Xiaohao, vice versa, you should be looking for a play now while Shun is still trying to look for that level 6. And that's what he is looking for right now. They will drop down a war, but it hasn't been spotted just yet. They don't know the Maokai is here. On needs to be careful. The he flushes. The kitten is caught in D-Claw. He's going to be killed off. No problem whatsoever. I love it. The Zeri just went, all right, I'm out. Tries to use the heal. It. But oh. the Nami took it. I'm over real. On most senses, that isn't the best thing in the world, but gets you to Imperial Mandate quicker, so maybe it's all right. <laughs> Look, Sora, I guess that's kill secured for you. Uh, BLG is going to respond with this Herald going over towards Shun. And if AL wants to force this 1v2 in ball lane, I think it's doable because you have the Lucian all available. Uh, but they're just gonna back off here and take the one for zero trade. I didn't, uh, BLG didn't expect Malkai to be level six so fast because, of course, your own jungle was a level five. You kind of expect them to hit it around the same time. So On was just a little bit greedy with stepping up as a lonely kitten, and he does get spotted from the bot lane of AL. And the flash W coming out of Malkai just gets it secured. Yumi, having, not having the W available anymore, it just goes to a free kill. This is a pretty free kill, you should just give it to Betty, but Sword Art going in with a <laughs> sneaky W and does get that for himself. Isn't terrible, Enchanter's getting kills early, not too bad. Because uh, you do have the Imperial Mandate win condition when it comes to that mid-game. Yeah, look, we'll call it calculated for now and stop people from getting mad. But uh, it is, it is, of course, the kill there in mid lane. While we were talking about that, we did come back into live and saw a flash being burned there by the Jace of AL. So nice start to having that uh, ultimate available to Shun as he makes a little bit of a move for himself. Top lane, we see Bin looking to try and get his first play of the game. And again, I'm, I'm not saying it's the exact same as game number one, but it's feeling very similar regardless of who's on what champion. It feels like we are uh, having a bit of a loop, a bit of a break in the uh, in the in the matrix right now as it's uh, almost identical to what we saw in game number one. This time around, though, it is just BLG on those big scaling picks and kind of just happy to survive, as we mentioned earlier in the in the first game. Yeah, I mean, Bin does have the Nar once again in his pockets. Elk is just going to E out and get out of trouble here with the Yumi. Trying to sustain back that poke. But now Shun having his... Uh... Oh. Bin? He's looking for it. They're going to force the it. flashes out. He can't get it. And the Maokai just happens to be at the right place at the right time. He does have his ultimate available to him, but he is in the bounce house right now. He is getting pushed about. Will knock back Xiao Hao. And with the blast cone there, keeps himself alive. Sword Art does have flash, but isn't going to bother using it because he knows he's dead. Betty gets hit by the Rune Prison. BLG, we thought it was going to be topside with the solo bolo. It was bot lane with the four-man stack. I mean, Xiaohao comes in clutch with the ultimate and saves ZDZ from dying in a 1v1 up against Bin, but unfortunately, AL's ball in was just too overextended when you don't have the Maokai hovering you this time around, and they get engaged on, and uh, 
they fall as a 0-4-2. All the plates going towards the side of VLG once again with this Herald being dropped as well. Yeah, way too overextended from the bot lane of AL this time again where Shun dodges the vision nicely and just gets an engage onto Betty where he Betty. is in and engages it first. But of course, once you eat in, you can't really eat out. Uh, even with the flash available, it just wasn't enough with Yaga uh, rotating as well. So these leads, you definitely don't want to be giving to a scaling composition. But once again, the balling of AL just providing all these angles for a scaling composition to really get their items online. And I will say, though, to Betty's uh, credit, he almost killed off Elk. Really very close to getting that kill there. And look, it doesn't change what would have happened after the fact. But... Still decent to try and go for that one here. Speaking of going for something, we are going to see AL moving towards this dragon. They're actually going to move ZDZ down here as well to try and fully commit to a 5v4 if they can. Shun not really in a position to contest this one here. So it's just looking like AL stopping the stacking early, making sure they do not give up anything more than they need to. And there's not going to be a super early soul for BLG. Yeah, it's not too bad for the side of BLG. You already had that first initial dragon in your pockets. And of course, the Zeri picking up Four plates in that bot lane tower. Three plates. Uh, you don't really have to overforce, especially when you want to be having a safe early game up against such a, a strong mid-game team composition coming out of AL this time around. Good decision making from the side of BLG. You just have to keep this up until the Ryzen Zeri gets their items online. I don't think uh, AL can really handle that later on into the game. And that's the big thing as well, is that I think it was smart from AL. They recognize, look, we have the Gale Force. We can move the Scion down. He's not really going to be able to do much against the Nar regardless. So no real loss there, car from a couple of minions. So happy to try and stop that stacking and kind of commit to that one as well. We will see no flash, remember, here on this Jace. And he's well aware of it because he is playing nicely behind his uh, where his vision line was. So he knows that there's no one in this bot side, uh, at least in the river, uh, <laughs> with that big ward there giving him vision. And... Uh, yeah, we're gonna go back to kind of just farming back, seeing these both these coals being finished up. We only have one more minion there for the Zeri before she gets hers. And uh, that's where we're gonna see the Immortal Shield Bow come out. And we're really gonna to need to see a, a big movement, you would imagine, as uh, Xiao Hao. Elk and Xiao Hao say hi, but they were both popping sweepers. He's got himself his W, he should be just fine. And they know that as well. They do not want to overstep their mark and get themselves caught out just in case someone else was sneaking around the corner. Yep, Elk was looking a little bit frisky with the way he was parting towards that tri-bush, but uh, he smelt a tree from a mile away, and good thing that he decided to back off. I mean, this bot lane is looking relatively well, although Betty and Sora has picked up their uh, mythics at 13 minutes into the game. I think if Betty, uh, sorry, if Elk plays it smart with his barrier, and of course the Yumi having all summoners available, they shouldn't die the initial engage, where uh, AL is trying to force something in this bot lane 4v4 as Ryze, of course, picking up the roll, but with the Ninja Tabby as well, he just isn't going to offer as much. Oh, Nat! Oh! <laughs> isn't going to offer as much, but uh, the Imperial Mandate was hit and then immediately smacked down. That was a very big amount of burst to come out there on that bot side. And uh, yeah, this is just Sean having another great game. 100% kill participation right now on the Sejuani. And I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm saying that we're seeing the same compositions just reversed, but BLG are making this look, look so much more clean comparatively to AL in game one. Yeah, I mean, getting that pick on to Sora once again, just a 2v3 in the bottom side. Shahal tries desperately to zone the bot side of uh, BLG, saving the tower, but like you said, Oshin, having an early uh, team comp where you have the Jace and Lucian in your pockets this time, but losing the early game is going to be so detrimental when it does uh, come to those items getting online for the side of Elk. So Xiao, please try and do something here because you are currently sitting on 1kp. Yeah, you're on 1kp. In fairness, it's 100% kp, in fairness to him. Gotta give him his due, but uh, it is... Uh... Not really a lot you can do. The Zeri is just going to play so, so safe, even without the Yumi available to her. She knows that I could just get over a wall. There's no real kind of threat on me unless you can get that hard CC. And it is kind of one of those moments where, especially in the newest on the newest competitive patch of 13.1b, which we haven't jumped onto yet, it's why the Sejuani has just been far more valued. And now Sword Art uh -oh, walks straight. Art. Oh, you flashed a little bit too early. The W comes in, the final chapter, and the kill goes over. That's L2, 0, and 2. Sean has been setting up his entire team so damn well, and they are just reaping the rewards here on BLG. Oshin, Sora is just so out of tempo compared to the jungle and ADC of AL, where he is just being left behind as they reset into base, and he's just kind of wandering into the hands of Shun. And once again, the kill goes over to Elk. 
202 now, having 100% KP onto the Zeri, picking up the bot lane tier 1 tower as well. Sword Edge is giving BLG these opportunities to scale much easier into the game, but it's just getting out of AL's control already. They're gonna make something happen. They gotta make something happen right now as AL. They need to try and sort themselves out because they are just falling too far behind. This Rift Herald will be a good start, but... 5,000 gold or 4,500 gold already at 60 minutes into the game. And you're on a scale in composition as BLG. You have the rise, the Zeri. You have the things that will move into you know, you know, monsters in those late game. But AL, they are struggling to try and keep pace right now. They are going to be pretty much equal in terms of items, right? It's coming in towards that mid game. That, that You know, AL, as we saw in game number one for BLG, should be having the power. Yeah, I mean, you weren't able to kill Elk when you had the Gale Force advantage, and I believe Zeri is still sitting on her Noon Quiver. Now with the Barrier and Mortal Shield Bow in her pockets this time around, with the little kitten attached to her at all times, it's going to look so hard unless Pinzi lands these amazing cues onto the carries of BLG before you engage a 5v5. Thing is, as well, you, you've got... Yes, you have engaged on the side of AL, but it's very situational engage. It's not an, as easy as a ultimate coming out here from sean it's not as you know point and click as a ruin prison with the rise it is very much like you need to have the scion hit his ultimate or get a, a knock up there with a decimating smash you need to have the tidal wave hit someone alongside the the maokai ultimate which can be avoided so these are definitely moments here for al to try and think about what they can try and do but while that's happening blg are thinking about what they are doing which is taking the dragon and getting themselves back up to stacking up that soul yeah, most definitely. And my eyes aren't just on Xiao Hao's um, flash, because obviously, like you said, there's not enough 100% uh, CC coming out of AL, but, you know, when you do have the flash root available on this Maokai pick, and the Zeri still doesn't have that cleanser Mikhail's online, well, it's going to be a very easy pick for the side of AL, a lot of follow-up, especially with the Gale Force in Lucian's hands as well. So I would love to see that happen before we hit, you know, the fourth dragon where two of them have already gone to the side of BLG. The scaling team composition has been picking up these early dragons where you're giving them the Dragon Soul Wincon, which is a mountain. Mountain Soul on something like a Rise, uh, a Zeri who already has a Yumi for all that su uh, support and extra little setups was definitely not ideal uh, coming in here for AL. They need to go for something. And this is the thing, look, I have no problem with a team that wants to just kind of go crazy, go a little bit aggressive, make something happen. And, you know, you go down swinging, you go in a gl blaze of glory. To, yeah. to lose to kind of, you know, just the same thing over and over or you're just not really changing anything, it does feel like Something's you're kind of happening. missing a trick. Cap Something far. is happening, but BLG are responding in kind and saying we're not going to allow anything to happen. But they might try and go for a fight here. Here we go. They're going to try to get the Scion in on top of the Zeri, but not really working out. They will get the second turret. Those has two turrets, but ZDZ moves forward. The final chapter not really in a great position. Does force ZDZ over the wall. Shun very, very low. Flash away by Xiao Hao. Keeps him safe away from the Mega Nar. Bin is going to be able to try and get on top of the other top laner as Shun does fall. AL trying to force BLG in a bad situation. That's nice Pinzi? moves here for the Jace. As he gets himself over the wall, the Zeri is dead. Yigao trying to be the hero here, trying to push forward, but this Jushin and Jace do too much damage. And that is the mid game power AL needed to leverage. BLG playing it so safely until the 19 minute mark where all the kills go towards the side of AL and they just revive from the game state. I mean, like I was saying, I think AL, they forgot that they're playing the strong uh, team composition this time around. They're still playing like scaling, but with the ultimate getting dropped from Xiao Ha and of course the follow up from ZDZ, they get two towers and all the kills where it just kind of brought them back into the game and just repeat this because they don't have the items online for the side of BLG just quite quite yet, so this is going to be your way to victory for this game too. We see Shun going in for a flank, but of course the second tier tower does go down from the sound ultimate. But this fight, which is played so messily from the side of BLG, everyone is just focusing down Shun, really good uh, target from AL, where the front line dies instantly. Of course, Bin's Nar ultimate misses as well, really big shame for this team uh, fight. But look at Pinzi flashing and eating onto the carries of BLG where it was just such a big burst of damage and BLG wasn't ready for that where Elk dies in the middle of the wall and just the way Pinzi played this team fight was so patient and exactly what we need for AL to get back to this game. Yeah, a little bit of life in them, great to see and honestly, you know, 
It do, as you said, it felt like BLG were kind of maybe disrespecting their opponents a little bit there. You're not playing the, the mid-game composition. You're not the one with the power right now. Yes, you can burn someone down. I'm not discounting the damage that comes out from something like a Nar, a Ryze, or a Zeri. But if I was to pick between the two, I think AL definitely have a lot more in the tank. So really nicely done there for the side of AL. They are still behind by about 2,000 gold, but they're in a much better position than they were a few minutes ago. Yeah, I mean, like we've seen this Jace pick two games in a row, very oppressive when it does get to the 20-minute mark with his two items available, like the Man Immune Eclipse. Uh, once this Jace does get uh, land his Qs onto the carries of BLG, it's just going to look really tough unless Yumi gets to really sustain back up. But BLG taking over the entire top side with this vision control where you're face checking to Sejuani and Nar. Uh, although Nar is still split pushing, but I believe once it does get to the 5v5 stage, Bin. You know, I believe in you. You can land those ultimates again. <laughs> I mean, even if he doesn't, I just looked at the CS. He has a 70 CS lead over his opponent. He is nearly flame horizoning. He has a, he has a 350 gold bounty on him, kill bounty, because of his farm. He has no other things on top of him. That is ridiculous coming out here from Bin, but... CDZ has been soaking it up, has been doing well enough to keep himself relevant. And like you said, he's just a, a giant meat wall to try and be a nuisance and an engaged tool for the side of AL. But 35 seconds till the dragon spawns now, Kitty, as we come in. BLG haven't got control over this river just yet, but they do have a ward. They know on the side of AL that that ward is there, but we'll see if there's any anything to come out of this. There are still plenty of summoners available. No flash on Betty, though. That's the big thing I'm looking at here. Yeah, I mean, the beauty of playing Sion is once you get that Jack Show and, of course, the second item online, you're just way too tanky. So it doesn't matter that you're 70 CS down, but BLG trying to just dodge the Sion or dodge the initial engage. Yaga doesn't oh. have the flash available. It, yeah, we're going to see a little bit of a fight on both fronts. Both junglers using their ultimates, but they're going to get the Mega Nar now off. Finn flashes away. He does not want to lose his perfect KDA of 0, 0, 0. No one's died just yet. Elk is kind of peppering down the damage, but the Scion's still very, very healthy. No one has died, but the Dragon is still on the pitch. The big thing for BLG, though, is they're going to lose the Mega Nar. With the Mega Nar down, the Sejuani ult not available for this team fight. It does look like it's going towards the side of AL for this second Earth Dragon. But... Pin Z, he has a really good angle to get the Qs online. He does miss the first one, but if he gets the Q and the poke Bin. onto the carriers of BLG... Yeah, they're looking to try and bring down ZDZ. That Black Cleaver doing work right now, just burning him down so, so much. You can see Bin already nearly has his Mega Nar back available. And everyone's starting to reset. Kitty, we're still in the same fight. This is still the same dragon. Neither team has lost anyone, but they are seeing some things being burned. Now Betty has his flash back, and everyone across the board should have their summoners available. It looks like we were all just kind of a gentleman's agreement to get it before this fight. But the major difference is that Bin is Meganar once again, so they have the engaged tool to really opt into a winning fight after this Dragon Soul Point goes over to the wards, the side of BLG. With the Sion and Malkiel not being available for this fight, they're going to go look for the Baron because they don't have another option. And look, that was just an unfortunate time. You did have TPs available for BLG. They got Bin back, they got Rives back, but there is a ward in the back of this pit. With Scion now joining, this is risky, but they'll melt this one right now. This could be this could be the Baron flip of the game. Shun has the smite available, so I don't know about the 50-50 flip. Here we go. They're looking for the fight back once Bin takes a huge chunk out of him. Shun gets caught out a little bit himself as well. Tries to flash away. Gets the heal out of on. Gets the cat on his back, but it's not enough to keep him alive. Now AL are feeling confident. Elk trying to get out to the but he flashes while the Maokai was still moving. And that means he falls down. Bin trying to build Mega once more. It's on to him. He looks for something, but he gets hit by the Bramble Smash and he cannot land it under the carry. Finally, he tries to get a kill, but on says, thank you very much. That one's mine. And now Everyone from AL is running away. It looks so good at the start, but now the Nar, the Yumi, and the Rise are just putting in work. You go moving forward, trying to see if you can catch out some of these low health bars, and AL recognize they're not safe in those brushes. They're smelling Betty, but he gets out safely after a really terrible trade from the side of AL. I mean, I could see what they were trying to do. They were trying to turn with the Jace poke, and of course, the Sejuani falls down first from the side of BLG, but this Nar and Ryze are just way too fed already with the level advantage, both level 15. And like I said, Zeri is also becoming online, and she was able to challenge Lucian throughout this entire fight. But look at Pinzi. He was just trying really hard to land the poke onto BLG, but Yumi enters the fight very late, where Shun kind of just falls straight away. And 
The biggest point here is that Xiaohao lands a flash W onto Elk and secures that kill as well. But Yaga untouched this entire fight and he just comes in with the flank and shreds everyone down because he is that level 15 rise with the two items available and Bin is unkillable with the Yumi attached. Yeah, the the double yordle combination, uh, definitely. Actually, I don't think I don't think actually uh, Yumi is a yordle, but Al hey, go Her back to the scene of the crime. Yeah, Nar is. I don't think Yumi is, but maybe we'll talk about this a little bit later as we got ourselves a little bit of a fight there. We can see the Sejuani goes in. They just need to keep her alive or keep her away from the Baron and they secure it. But now can you get out alive? Remember, you used a hell of a lot of summoners in that last fight, so you won't have them available to you. Shun still Walk walking forward, still looking for something. Elf pushing forward. The flash from Ping Z does keep him alive for now. He has to move backwards to not get caught up with the final chapter, but you know he's going to go down. He's not going to be able to trade back Elk in this particular exchange but important for the rest of AL, they get out with four Barons. AL just getting so desperate and forcing a Baron the second time in a row, but this time BLG just weren't able to react fast enough because they were resetting from the previous play, and it does go into the hands of AL, so it does revive them from the current game state where it looked terrible as the Rise and Nar, of course, are online. But with Pinzi dying as a uh, return for four Baron buffs, I would gladly take that, but you need to remember that this Dragon is spawning in two minutes, so you still have that to worry about for the side of AL, so you need to force something to happen with these Baron minions before time runs out. So there's no vision for the side of BLG this time, so they just sneak it or AL just forces it and just, I don't yeah. think BLG expected it to melt this quickly, so they were very slow with the rotation, especially with Sejuani still getting her Skeletal Crab, it was spotted on a ward, but they reacted very slow and this gets shredded and Shun going in just head first. But he gets caught very similar to what happened in that first Baron fight. And he go well, he was pretty low, but of course, with the Baron going into the hands of AL, they were trying to force a fight. Only getting Pinzi. Although, one kill, it's not worth for the Baron. Would tend to agree. Fairly close in the gold as well. Only about a thousand, not really that much of a difference. One minute till Dragon Soul, that would be for BLG. But AL will have the Baron for a little bit more after the spawn of the dragons, so they should have priority over mid and bot, you would imagine. There's only been two towers taken here on the entire map by the side of AL. Actually, two towers in total by both teams, so, you know, kind of getting four uh, to a piece. But Finn so has flash Finn, available. He's looking for something, he's thinking about it, but it would be very risky. They get the Maokai ultimate out of him. Now Bin taking a fair chunk of damage onto him. Won't get hit by the Maokai ultimate just on the back side of that one there. So he's going to get totted up here by the Yumi as they try and maybe look for a re-engage. No Mega Nar at the moment. Is going to lose it just at the last second? The final chapter keeps ZDZ in place, but it does not kill him off. Both top laners now taking a brunt of the damage here from both of these sides, but neither dying as they just become the big meat walls they need to be for their teams. A lot of ultimates being traded in this mid wave, but of course the Baron minions just have so much presence when you are trying to fight for that mid lane priority. But Nar has a really nasty angle right now, so if he's able to get Mega Nar for this Dragon Soul, BLG is looking in a very good position. They are indeed. Yigao has TP. Shun almost takes a shock blast that could have killed him there. Betty goes forward. Betty's feeling it. They're trying to make this one work. They do have. A barrier to be used and the heal. Lots of summoners being used. AL finding a bit of momentum. AL finding themselves in a little bit of a situation where they are able to take these fights. This Scion is so hard to kill in these situations that it feels like BLG need to have yeah, a little bit TP. of a moment of brilliance. You get he does TP TP towards down the towards that side. side. Yeah, he's going to get himself there. Blue buff secured he's as the dragon HP. has been started. Yeah, he is half HP because he didn't actually go back. He just TP'd down towards that bot side. So not able to regen right now. ZDZ getting knocked down by these Black Cleaver procs, reducing his armor as Ben goes into Mega. He's got the cat on his back and he's looking for something more. The final chapter comes back again as the Immortal Shield Bow was popped to go in. It's going to be a 50 50, but Dragon reset as a look at Shun burn down. Shun not quite dead. He's dead. And now you can circle out the dragon. But look at Elk. He's just free hitting on the back side. There's a fight here for the side of AL as they just shred Isn't through everybody. It's Elk with the cat as he moves forward. There's a Elk. double kill. Looking for a little bit more. Elk trying to make this one work. We've seen this one before, but he's not quite able to make it happen. It's Dragon secured. Three for two trade in favor of AL. Really good target selection from AL. They decided to just focus down Shun while he was alone in the dragon pin. And of course, he dies before the dragon drops below 1k HP. And they didn't need to flip the 50 50 dragon soul. But a Elk just sitting across the wall, tossing out so much damage. I believe Yalal just didn't space correctly in that team fight where he fell straight away. But of course, this dragon was just getting focused down for the side of BLG because this was the dragon soul point. But Elk 
untouched on this other side of the wall. However, they just don't have enough damage to get rid of the Sion. I mean, Sion is currently, what, 90% win rate in the LPL. This champion, once you scale into the late game, once you get the Baron buff available, and he gets those items online, it's gonna be really tough for even Yago to shred through him in these team fights. Yeah, you can see how much this top laner was just dealing right now. And even in the in the enraged dead zombie form, he almost took down Elk at the la very last breath. But that does put the Dragon Soul now off for a little bit and gives an extra couple of resistances. Remember, those resistances will stack the later the game goes on. And for someone like a Scion, that is pretty significant. Betty. But now Betty, he's in a lot of trouble if he gets caught. They're going to try and keep him alive. The cleanse is good. The final chapter, though, keeps ZDZ in place. He is, again, still so very tanky. Bin looking for something. Not going to find it, though, whatever it was. And now BLG, they need to be careful. Flash in, there's no tower there anymore. And Yagao with the lifeline, but the Seras keeps him alive. Pinzi trying to do something here onto the backside, but Bin almost gets the Meganar down, but ZDZ has been left all on his loan. He will be kept alive only to die. Goes into the enraged zombie, but will end up falling 30 seconds or a little bit less till the Baron spawns. And it looks like BLG have finally found themselves back in this game. All right, Oshin, it's currently 32 minutes into the game. Zeri has three items online. Rice just picked up his Void Staff. It is getting to that point where the scaling composition is taking over these team fights. And of course, you saw how fast Xiao Hao died in that team fight. Elk just melted through him. And without the jungle available, BLG is just going to take this ban for free. And once they do have these empowered minions to push mid and top, I'm afraid these team fights are just looking so suffocating for AL. I think that's the best way you can put it. Suffocating is the word because there's just going to be so much coming at you from so many sides. It's going to be nigh impossible to be able to confirm it. There is the Baron for BLG. They'll have that right up until the next Dragon Spawn. And as you said, just having that priority, having that pressure around the map is going to be huge. But again, we can look at the replay here. Uh, Pin Z, you're not quite sure we're looking at him, but I guess you're just going to say, recognizing AL saying, look, we maybe go a little bit overextended, but it looked like they could have turned it around. Yeah, I mean, like you said, the tier one tower was down, and I believe Shahal did get a really nasty flash root onto Yago, but Yago's flash was just in time where he flashed into the safety of Elk and the Sejuani, where he didn't die as a response. And of course, Zeri, once he has the ultimate available and the Sion doesn't have his to run away, the Zeri's just going to pop off, and you can't outrun. Azari with Yumi. No, you you cannot outrun Azari Yumi. It's just not really possible. And the great thing is as well for BLG is that all they lost in that last fight was one flash. That was Yagao's flash at the start of that fight. Whereas I look on the other side of it, you've lost Xiao Hao's flash. You lost Ping Z's flash. You lost Sword Art's flash. You lost a lot of summoners that may not be available for this fight if BLG take it for you know the dragon once it spawns. But looks like they're gonna try and push in towards these side lanes, use that Meganar as a deterrent for this Scion. He's got himself the force of nature as well, so he's doing very, very well for himself. But again, more and more pressure, more and more gold coming in. And again, like I said, suffocating out AL, who had an opportunity. They got this composition. They kind of took it from PLG from game one. It looked like they may have found how powerful it was, but you can see now with the later the game goes on, 34 minutes now coming up on the clock. This team is just so difficult. To, and even just the, the rise with its three items, he's so tanky. Yeah, I mean, AL, like, the Sion can't even match up against this Nara anymore, so the Jace is forced to go to the side lane. But without this Jace poking down the enemy team before it fights, uh, pursues, I'm afraid that AL just doesn't really have an angle to win these team fights. Yago has the stopwatch available. He does, but no flash. And yes, he's tanky, but he's not going to be that tanky against four members of... AL and now without your rise, you gotta be very careful. Shun needs to make sure he stays alive. There's 20 seconds till the dragon spawns. The Zeri is doing well though to put in work. Bin coming in off the flank as well. Has got the Mega Nar available to him. Doesn't use it just yet. Uses it to catch out Xiao Hao because he's the jungler. You've lost your top laner. You've lost your jungler. You've lost your front line. Elk still pushing forward. Needs to be wary though as ZDZ chases him down. But they could end the game right here, right now. Look at Elk's health bar. He is so tanky, oh, but Bin, Bin dies. But is it enough for them to really res the game because you are in such a sticky situation? Elk is completely online. Pinzi, you gotta start landing those cues before this Zeri just pops up in these team fights. I mean, with the double mountain dragons in the hands of BLG, he just has so many defensive runes, and now the dragon soul Pinzi. is once again being threatened. Pin Oh, Pinzi, they're going to go for Betty instead. He dashes forward. He's got a cleanse. He's got a flash. This is on Betty to outplay. He flashes forward. trying to get the Elk. Elk is dead. You do not have any more damage now as BLG. It was yeah, a one TV. fight. And they're looking for the TP. They're going to get Yagao back in on top of this fight. Does have the Realm more, but he's going to look for the Dragon instead. 
I mean, even with Elk falling down, Yago is full health and he is just TP to this fight. So BLG really need to shred this dragon down before this ZDZ. Oh, no smite. No smite on Sean. He hasn't got in. it yet. He doesn't have smite. They can't take this right now. They don't want to flip it because they know the Maokai is coming. This is a 3v5 effectively at the moment. You're going to see nice sidestep of ZDZ's ultimate. They're trying to jump on the pin Z who goes forward and gets himself a Dazania Stasis. TP coming in from Bin. This is going to be all there from AL. They're looking for it. Shun is dead. They don't have a jungler. The Baron, or excuse me, the dragon still going as they're going to look for this one here. The Real Forno. Betty gets killed on this team fight. It started in mid lane at the inhibitor. It's still going. It's literally a Bin versus the world, even though Shun dies, but him coming in with the clutch TP by the last second. He just saves the entire fight and I believe this final dragon go does go towards the side of BLG now that Xiao Hao has been executed. Yago is just going to shred this thing and the dragon, Mountain Dragon Soul is going to towards the side of a very tanky Rise and Zeri who have all those health items. And this will be the dragon confirmed here for the side of BLG. Get themselves the soul it took a while but again this was great play from al they kind of said look we can do this we have summoners on betty and they just focus out elk yeah i mean betty had a really nice e dodging this initial sejuani invade uh, engage and of course zeri falls as a response of that uh Yagal is getting a bit impatient here by forcing the dragon when it is still a 50 50 flip especially having numbers disadvantage zdz does tp into the fight but well in like about five seconds i believe bin is going to come through with his tp and Yago is just constantly being zoned out by this sign because he just doesn't have enough damage to kill him. But you know who does? Bin does. And he comes in clutch, yep. gets the Mega Nar from 0% bar, and he just kills everyone with the Yumi attached. And this is so scrappy from BLG as well. I gotta say, AL just utilizing a lot of their power, kind of kiting out these fights very, very well. But it's just not enough. It does feel... Like every now and again, they almost have an opportunity to bring this back. They almost find the perfect fight. Because again, don't forget, these death timers are getting very, very long. They are just not reading the position where if you lose two or three members, you're down for 40 plus seconds now at a point. So you need to be very aware that what you're taking is the correct fight for you and your team. I mean, your Wincon was playing through the Jace poke but with the mountain soul in the hands of blg look at that damage it's not doing anything barely shredding through the uh, shield that mountain soul gives here we go we're gonna see bin trying to move forward here on the pin z he's getting taken very low bin doesn't go down just yet though it's blocked by the yumi nicely done there by on to make sure that the nar did not fall down waiting for those mountain soul shields to come back baron will be up in seven seconds so now we're gonna see a little bit of a separation here now for blg they need to make sure bin does not die mentioned earlier the long death timers if you're not careful and the al they're not done yet kitty they are still pushing forward they're still confident enough in their ability to make this one work they know that blg bin doesn't have that tp available so if you want to look for a force while bin is still so chunked out barely getting uh any heals from the yumi you can force right here they can force it they haven't gotten a reset out of bin just yet he will start to go back just now and that's going to wait a little bit longer hasn't got the yumi on his back maybe oh there he goes i didn't see the animation on the mini map so but gets himself the reset gets himself back onto the map not going to fully reset just yet as uh this mid lane it, his game is now devolved kitty it's an aram it is a it is an all mid all random all the time because it is all about that Baron buff. It feels like it's not going to be the game ender just yet, but it can lead to some pretty decent setups. Bin, very, very close to Mega, will have it available to him. They know that everyone's kind of retreating out right now as Sean moves forward. Everyone's starting to get a little bit testy, a little bit antsy as oh, Betty is in a little bit of a weird sweat. Bin's looking for something. They know he's there, though, and they're putting down some serious damage. They get the Maokai ultimate out of Xiao Hao. They go forward, ben! but he only catches them out. Nobody gets stunned, and he doesn't catch out Betty either. Bin is dead. Now it's onto Yagao and onto Elk. It's very separated from BLG. They just didn't really put themselves in the right position, and AL pounce and get themselves the kills. Oshin, now with AL picking up this win with this composition, a second game in a row i'm pretty sure they can just end with a 2v5 for the side of blg the zeri just can't really survive the amount of damage that al still has in them but this we'll find out. al team composition maybe it is just the better team comp maybe here we go we're gonna go forward here they're gonna get themselves the final chapter into the ga so already the zeri has died once the yumi will die 
and the Zeri will die again. So they tried their best. They did take down the Maokai, but these death timers are just too long. We're going to game three, Kitty. AL had themselves the compositions. They felt that it was the better of the two, and they are proving now with two games, the Lushidami has been proven supreme. You know what, Oshin? You said that it's looking like an Aram, but I'm pretty sure we saw an Aram for 40 minutes of this game too because we just saw constant fighting but no one was dying and that was getting really concerning but of course with that game winning a uh, game turning play in the mid lane where they were able to get so many kills onto the jace and lucian they were just able to snowball and of course sneaking in that baron uh, later on into the game just helped them in, in so many scenarios i think in that last team fight specifically bin got a bit impatient although he landed a yeah. really nasty four man ultimate everyone on the side of uh, blg disengaged and they left so Nar ulted in, turned back into Mini Nar, and just died instantly. Where the communication definitely was an issue for that uh, last team fight. And honestly, it is great for AL to get this win back. Of course, that looked like earlier on in the game they weren't going to be able to do it. It was actually kills going over to the side of BLG. But I like that you brought it up. I I impatience and a little bit of frustration from BLG. That's kind of been the call from this squad pretty much the whole split. We are only five. This is their sixth series in terms of the split. But it has been impatience that's been really, you know, cursing them throughout this split. It's really been screwing them over because it just feels like if they just wait for the moment, if they find themselves, you know, someone who overextends, just be patient with it. They should find an opportunity. And a couple of times they just didn't and they got caught out. Yeah, they got caught out, and even with Elk not playing those team fights, extremely patient. But I think this time we can credit Pinzi. I think his Jace was extremely yes. uh, potent in this game. We've seen Jace very potent two games in a row, actually. So I'm really wondering if you want to opt into this Rise versus uh, Jace matchup when. Even in the late game, I believe the Rise wasn't doing too much damage to specifically the Sion pick, which was constantly on your face. And Yago just mm -hmm. didn't look like he had the best time in those team fights. So, of course, game two sample size, it just seems like this team comp is the better out of the two. Yeah, it does feel like, uh, wow, BLG really did not uh, get themselves the advantages, or they got themselves the advantages, did not make them into anything more tangible. And that's with a Mountain Soul as well. So. It just feels like right now this this Lucian Nami combination, 54,000 damage throughout this game, and even you know the Jace as well. Just having the Imperial Mandate to be able to buff up these two AD carries effectively is just so valuable in the LPL. It just feels like it's either going to be banned. You have to ban it away, or you got to do something about it. Try and get it confirmed for yourself, because I don't I don't think we're going to be seeing the same bans or the same picks coming into game number three. I feel like there is going to be a slight change because. If you go, if it basically becomes whoever gets Lucian Nami basically controls the game. There's just no way, right? And like you said, although Betty did the most damage in that game, this was not a perfect early game coming from the side of AL. We saw that Betty and Sword Art were just constantly getting caught out. But in the very end, with the Dragon Soul going towards BLG, they were just able to poke them out from just pure range, working alongside the Jace, where Ryze, as that short range mage champion, you just really aren't able to respond in terms of damage. And it's all up to Elk in these team fights and of course elk when you have a malka and the enemy team constantly flash dubbing onto you or rooting you on the spot it's going to be really tough to play oh absolutely and again he almost turned it around a couple of times but it did again feel like especially in that last fight around that mid lane that it was just very disconnected you know two people were going in three people were going backwards it did feel a bit weird for blg and al rightfully so took full advantage of it so we're going to send it to a break when we return we're going to have 